Polls have just closed in two elections in eastern Germany. Exit polls from the public broadcaster ZDF say that the far-right AFD party has won the most votes in the state of Thuringia, but might not be able to form a government. The party's anti-immigration wants to replace the euro with the Deutschmark and opposes the national government's approach to the war in Ukraine and climate change. Let's speak to our correspondent in Berlin, Damien McGuinness. Damien, uh, give us the figures, if you would. Yeah, so these are two regional elections, very important when it comes to figuring out uh, transport policy as well as education policy, very similar in Britain to, say, what would be the Scottish election. election. So very important elections in their own right. And what we've seen is an historic win for the far-right alternative for Germany party, the AFD, in Thuringia. In Saxony, the other state, uh, also a very important state in Germany, uh, the AFD has not come first place. It looks like, according to these exit polls, come second. In both cases, we're seeing the AFD, though, very strong. In Thuringia, you're talking about a third of votes look like, according to these exit polls, have gone to the far right. And the reason why that's historic is that the AFD has never won the most votes in any regional election in Germany. So they are celebrating. The mood is less happy in Saxony because it looks like they're probably coming second. But, you know, crucially, Martin, either way, they're not going to get into government. And that's because this is a party that is incredibly radical, particularly in this region of eastern Germany, uh, Thuringia. The leader of that regional party has been defined by courts as a fascist. So legally, we can call this man a fascist. And that is why no other party will work with the AFD. So they won't be able to get into government because you need coalition partners. What they can do, though, with a third of the parliament seats taken up by the AFD, is they can block pretty much any progress. They can uh, make it very difficult to form any governing coalition at all, because particularly in Thuringia, uh, it's looking right now almost impossible to form a majority government. You're going to have some very wobbly coalitions. Maybe the Conservatives will have to form a coalition with a new radical populist far-left party, which is barely possible. You might have three-way coalitions, maybe even four-way, maybe minority governments. What that means on the ground for those people in those regions is that it's going to be very difficult to push through any particular policy. And what this means nationally is this is a real signal for national elections next year here in Germany, where the national parliament is going to be voted. And... Um, People are really looking at this with fear because what we've seen is the national governing parties in both those states have been really punished. Olaf Scholz's centre-left uh, Social Democrats have really had a battering. They managed to get back into parliament, but barely. So it's bad news for the central government because it's a bit of a slap in the face for them, to be honest. And it is good news for the far right. But if the AFD have done so well and it's sending a message to the other parties that there is support for their ideas, that there is concern amongst voters about matters such as immigration, how are they going to respond? We've already seen uh, a big response, really, because immigration and migration as a whole has been a huge topic in Germany for a long time. And the AFD has really influenced, particularly the Conservative Party, but also the centre-left Social Democrats. And now, to be honest, it feels like all anyone talks about here is migration. So it can't be said this is an issue which is being ignored. The AFD has put that onto the agenda. What we are seeing, though, is some specific regional matters in eastern Germany to do with the history, to do with trauma suffered in the 90s, also to do with a traditional lack of party loyalty. These are voters who are happy to switch parties. And a lot of people who voted AFD this time might have voted centre-left last, last time. So there's no guarantee this is going to stay. And you can't really translate this onto national politics. The difficulty is, really, is that the AFD is in, in particularly this particular region, has defined itself as a party that wants to undermine the democratic structure and the state of the democratic government of Germany. And that's a difficult position because uh, what a lot of politicians would say in other parties is that people are voting for non democratic party. The difficulty is, of course, if a third of people are voting for that, what do you do? How long can you keep up this firewall, which essentially is trying to keep out the AFD? So it's an it's a ongoing question. There's no real answer to it. The, what we will see is um, a lot of people looking towards eastern Germany to see how, what now happens. These results were expected, so it's not going to come as a shock. There are going to be more elections in a couple of weeks' time. 
which will be less dramatic. Um, and I think once these elections are out of the way, we're going to see a less ferocious political rhetoric and probably a lot more cooperation with parties. And already what we've seen are some quite drastic measures in order to curb migration. So probably it's going to have a big effect on national politics as well. Damien McGuinness in Berlin, thank you very much. This is BBC News.